The gem of palaces. Between the districts of Hadaya Kalkaba and Roxy, there is a building that defies description. Is it a palace, a museum, a fascinating painting, or a history-inspired legend? In fact, it is all of that combined. It is one of Egypt's most precious treasures, a marvel of all ages, and a witness to the 1973 victory. It is Al Tahra Palace. In the early 20th century, Antonio Lasciac, the most renowned Italian architect at the time, was assigned to build a palace of Princess Amina, daughter of Khedevi Ismayo. He managed to create one of the most breathtaking palaces that Egypt has ever known. A masterpiece built down to the minutest detail, purely in the Italian style. Mohammed Tahir Pasha inherited the palace after his mother passed away, but he had to sell it. In 1939, King Farouk I purchased it for 40,000 Egyptian pounds. He gifted the palace to his wife, Queen Farida. Once we cross the majestic front gate, we enter a world of magic and myths described by the marble and alabaster statues, fountains with alabaster and bronze statues, and the vases that fill the garden all made by the greatest sculptures of the 19th century. The palace's door now opens to reveal its secrets and treasures, all of which we shall see in the store. From the white marble staircase to the alabaster ceiling, the journey starts from here, from the ground lobby. A few steps into the palace and the ground lobby, we can see a large room that combines the richness of tradition and the touch of originality. This is the pool room, and at its center is a bronze inlaid ebony pool table, one of its kind in the whole world. It was a gift from King Louis Philippe I of France to Muhammad Ali Pasha and it was moved to the palace by order of King Farouk I. Opposite the pool table is the royal cigar cabinet made of pure silver and glass. Next to the legendary pool table, there is a set of ivory inlaid ebony pool cues placed in a gilded case. It was in this room and on this very pool table that the epic victory of Egypt in the 1973 Egyptian-Israeli war was planned and attained. It was here that President Sadat and leaders of the Egyptian military laid out the maps of the planned crossing of the Suez Canal and discussed war plans. The palace was a secret operation room during the glorious war of October the 6th, 1973. This is the map room, which contains all the large-scale maps of Sinai and the crossing and assaults operations. Walking out of the map room and the antique pool hall, we now head to the upper lobby. Every step reveals a new piece of art, including rare antiques that are symmetrically placed around the staircase and on its steps, as well as rare paintings and fascinating ornaments and inscriptions. We reach the main lobby on the first floor, the ceiling of which is decorated 
with alabaster pieces divided into squares to reflect light in marvelous shades of colors. Under the ceiling, there is an incredible table with perhaps the two most beautiful candelabra in the world, which are made of pure silver and decorated by ornaments and flourishes. Here is also the goblet that the notables of Fayum gifted to King Farouk I on his marriage anniversary. Under the table, there is an antique carpet bearing the initials of Muhammad Ali Pasha. The walls of the hall are adorned by two oil paintings by the renowned artist Adolf von Mikkel. One depicting a female shepherd in the harvest season and the other depicting a female shepherd in the lean season. There is also a cabinet containing the rarest and most dazzling collection of works by French artist Emile Gallet. On the left side of the lobby, we can see the Napoleon Corner, which includes several bronze statues of Napoleon in different poses, a mahogany sofa bearing the name of Muhammad Said Pasha, the Wali of Egypt, a sailboat-shaped bronze chandelier, and pieces of lead inlaid shells. On the right side of the main lobby lies the Islamic style arabesque sitting room where all parts and element boast of breathtaking craftsmanship. The ceiling is embellished with wooden engravings of granite verses. This fireplace is made of fires that make it resemble an oil painting. On both sides of the fireplace there are two masterfully crafted Persian carpets from the Qajar era. The sofa right here is one of the Orient's treasures. There is also a Koran box made of wood inlaid with shells, ivory, silver, turquoise and sapphires. The harmony and splendor of the place is enhanced with a shell inlaid ebony jewelry box on which Quranic verses are written in Kufi script. We now return to the lobby to enter the dazzling luxurious main sitting room. Every item here is an artistic masterpiece and each has its own story and secrets. As for this table, it represents a perfect combination of art styles, superior craftsmanship and inspired maker. On the table, there is a disc of marble whose surface is a mosaic showing the Vatican surrounded by the most famous Italian landmarks. An Egyptian carpenter called El Chobakshi managed to craft an exact replica of the base of this table by order of King Farouk I. We move to the left side of the main sitting room to enter the main dining room which has an English design and contains 24 chairs and a rare set of plates specially made for the royal family. Among the most charming contents of the hall of the marble fireplace, a bronze clock and a vase with exquisitely shaped handles. From the dining room, we enter the royal study, but first we have to pass through a small sitting room filled with matchless antiques and furniture, such as this bronze inlaid ebony piano. One of the rarest and most remarkable pieces of furniture in this palace is the silver inlaid ebony cabinet. Over this gorgeous, colorful fireplace, we can see a dazzling clock made of crystals and ebony with protruding bronze pieces. In one of the corners of sitting room, there is a bronze clock on which a scene of Greek mythology is drawn.
Through this small sitting room, we can enter the awe-inspiring study which witnessed events that influenced the entire Egyptian people. Every piece of furniture and every antique here is a rare art piece. On our way from the main lobby to the upper lobby, we pass by many icons, art pieces and Renaissance era vases portraying scenes that capture the eyes and minds of the beholders. We now move on to the upper lobby to see tableaus and antiques from all ages. It is almost like going on a journey back in time. There is a painting of Albatra city as well as a chandelier of a Pegasus with the head of Parrot which seems to have come out of a mythical world. Visitors of the palace's bedroom feel that every room is an indescribable, dreamy, romantic melody. The only way to savor it is to say nothing, for silence in the presence of beauty is the most befitting praise. The main wing contains the main bathroom, which boosts a singular design that combines oriental Western and Autumn art styles. Every corner of Al Tahra Palace is a part of a significant historic event. Kings and leaders have once stood in front of every inscription of its walls. It is here where King Farouk I and his wife Nariman celebrated many happy occasions. After the 23rd of July Revolution in 1952, the place had been used as a presidential guest house. It is a masterpiece of creativity, elegance and sophistication. A piece of history that shall always remind us that Egypt is the cradle of civilization, the home of art and the birthplace of beauty. Al Tahra Palace, the gem of palaces and the secret to Egypt's victory.